All right, so perfect. We are here, ladies. Welcome everyone who is watching us share and listen to Lauren's insp inspiring story. Lauren, thank you so much for joining us all the way from California. Yeah, Los Angeles. Perfect. All right. So Lauren, I want to know, before you found me, what was your relationship with dating advice and relationship advice? What were you looking out for? Well, I, I kind of stumbled upon the world of relationship dating advice after my divorce and meeting someone I really liked. Um, and it was kind of haphazard, like following a few coaches on Facebook, maybe reading articles here or there. I wasn't really uh, attached to anyone, but I just had a lot of information on my Facebook feed and stuff like that. So you were following multiple people at the same time? Yeah, yeah, kind of very casually. <laughs> so what got you serious and what attracted you to me then? I, I was seeing a guy that I really, really um, loved. And I was Googling something like how to get him to propose or why won't he propose something. And I came across an article that you had guest written on a relationships website and something about your take on feminine energy and the um, commitment timeline of a man was so refreshing and so different. I'm like, okay, I have to hear more about this. <laughs> awesome. So was there anything particular that made you dive first into the smaller programs? Because I know that's how you started. You started with the smaller programs, right? Yeah. You know, it's hard to put in to define like a singular moment where you make a decision, you know, but I, I do remember my overall feelings of being um, that this was different. And I thought, well, you know what, if I just try it, what's the worst that can happen? You know, everything stays the same, but if I try it, there's also a, a great payoff that could happen. So why not? And I just kind of followed my gut and went with it. Something just felt different. Wow. Okay. So before we dive further into your journey, can you share with the ladies three tangible results you got out of this work? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, first of all, I would say that obviously I um, got my main goal, which is to meet my soulmate, get married, and um, create the life together that, I mean, I really always dreamed of. Um, second of all, I've been able to use these skills in, a lot in my personal relationships um, to feel better about setting my own personal boundaries and, you know, stronger in myself. Um, and thirdly, I would have to say the money. <laughs> I've accidentally, or so I think, um, manifested so amazingly well. Um, I remember talking to you when we were wedding planning and thinking, oh my God, is this worth it? You know, we're paying for this ourselves. And I can tell you, Sammy, at the end of the day, we paid for a, a pretty expensive wedding, all in cash, went on a honeymoon, no debt and moved into a new house and filled it with furniture. So, I mean, this is just a complete 180 from where I was when I started. And it's not um, in just in one area. It's really, truly incredible. Wow. Wow. Like it's, it's everything, everything turned around because I, I remember when you were joining the inner circle, the investment was what, like 3,600 or 3,000 something. And I remember you literally have, have, I could feel your anxiety on the email. It's like, I'm just going to do it. I don't want to think about it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. Deep breath. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. I remember that anxiety in investing um, that money there. Well, you know, anyone who knows me, Sammy, knows that I don't friv frivolously spend money. Um, I work very hard for my money. I'm very wise with my money. Um, and I really don't spend large sums on myself. I mean, that's just... When I heard that amount, I was just like, this is kind of insane, you know? <laughs> but, you know, once I made the commitment to do it, um, 
really everything changed. Not only was it worth it, was it worth every penny? Um, the value that I got in return, um, it's the dividends are unbelievable. And I was thinking to myself uh, yesterday, actually, I was going to write to you that, you know, any woman who's thinking of um, working with you and, and putting it off maybe for a sale or for something. And I thought, you know, Sammy, you're like the the most diva of us all. It's like, you're not going to wait for us to, you know, it, life is going to continue. The prices are going to go up. Things are going to get better. The value is going to get higher. And if, you know, we don't jump into work with you now, it's not going to become, uh, you know, any easier, any later. You know, oh, this is, well <laughs> you know? and um, I just thought that's, the first step to us becoming that way is and attracting that in our relationships is to become that way as well and to say, okay, you know what? I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to, you know, waste my time and see if something better comes along. I'm going to do it now and invest, you know? Everything changes from there. Yeah. I mean, your whole vibration, your level of seriousness towards the work, your level of, you know, art, Investing in yourself is literally telling the universe, I'm important. This matters. This is really, really important. And I'm sure you had, I don't know. I mean, I have to ask you, but did you do some like smaller stuff here and there from other coaches before diving big style into my work? No, really, as far as it went was kind of like Facebook and, and maybe I think a few newsletters, but there was nothing really that made me take that leap I just felt like okay it's another uh, one of those gimmicky things where you throw money at it and you get a, a ebook or something that doesn't really say anything but it's like 40 pages of not saying anything at all <laughs> and I'm like I just I didn't want to do that um so until I, I found you I thought okay well I'm gonna give it a shot I feel like there's something different here wow so, Lauren, um, I'm sure the ladies watching this are a little curious, more than curious, about your journey. When you first started with my smaller programs, Attract Your Soulmate, Soulmates Forever, what were the instant results or changes that you started to feel? I had a lot of confirmations of things that I had always kind of been inclined to do, but I felt were not correct or were wrong, like, you know, rotational dating, things like I always thought, well, you know, if we're not exclusive, why can't I talk to other people? But, you know, things that I've always told that was told that that's not okay, you know? Um, and then I had a lot of fear of actually going against those uh, feelings and that programming to do that. But once I did, I did get some instant results in terms of um, the results that I got from the people I was dating and the quality of men that I started to attract. Um, you know, even my relationship with myself, you know, I splurged on some nice skincare and some nice sheets and things to make myself feel good that I had never done before, you know, and it was all these little pieces that really added up to a huge life change. I also remember that, you know, I think inherently you, my intuition around you when I first started working with you and coaching you was that you're inherently a very feminine woman. Yes. And you also had a lot of those qualities already that you were learning, but somehow you were so afraid to just be diva with men. You were so afraid to own your worth and own your value. And so I think in the first step, it was all about you getting this affirmation, this confirmation, this is the right path. And you just you know, releasing the fear and just being that woman, you know, just, just doing that, right? It yeah, absolutely. On my honeymoon, I, um, I went, we went to this jungle with this like giant sinkhole where everybody just jumps in into this beautiful fresh water pool and everyone's having a great time down there. But at the top, 
people were there and some of them didn't want to jump and everyone was cheering for them, jump, jump, jump. And sometimes they didn't do it, you know, and I was afraid to do it. But me and my uh, husband, we jumped in at the same time and it was like so scary, right? When you jump, but once you get in the water, you're like, ah, I did it. That was awesome. And I think it, it's kind of like, that was like that for me with this, you know, like that trepidation up the top, do I jump? What if this, what if that? But once you just jump and let go, you're like, and you just feel it and you feel, do you just feel the joy of everything um, happening? You know, you let go of, of the need to control and it, it, what happens is amazing. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. And then I know that you, even though you were doing the smaller programs, I remember there started to get, appear new roadblocks. Yeah. Yeah, so there was a pattern emerging there. Yes. What was the pattern? Uh, well, I would get, I would, would attract men really easily. Uh, go on dates, attention was coming towards me, uh, fabulous dates, but it would always stop right before the commitment, the ring. And I would have people that, you know, I was really connecting with and, you know, getting close to. And I felt like, God, what? the hell is happening you know I'm doing everything but I just I needed some help I needed some fine-tuning and that's when I thought you know what I cannot afford to mess this up anymore <laughs> I'm serious now and I said Sammy oh, we have to I have to work with you one-on-one -on -one. I need help <laughs> I think this is so important because I think sometimes we need in order to you know I think there's the healthy ego, which is, you know, self-confidence and like, I can do this myself. But I think sometimes we stretch it too far and we don't ask for help. And then we can get locked in these patterns for years. So earlier it was not attracting good enough men and not having enough quality dates. So you got over that hurdle initially with the smaller programs. And then you, very, you were very smart to quickly spot that, okay, two, three good men, I'm really connecting with them. They're doing a lot of good things for me. They're, you know, pampering me. I remember you had some nice trips or really nice yeah. fine <laughs> dining and stuff going on for you, right? Yeah. When it came to building the commitment, it was falling off, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what were the things they were saying to you? What can you give us examples? Um you know, it would be things like it's so soon. I'm just not ready. Um, you know, trying to get me to become exclusive when, you know, I really, I, in some ways I wanted to be, but in some ways I really didn't want to be because, but, you know, <laughs> so um, there was a lot of that push pull around the exclusivity issue. I remember where they did not want to take the step to commit without being exclusive um, but I, I didn't want to, um, to give up my, my power that way, you know? So it was it's that s sense of stuckness and that push pull of, they wanted exclusivity before the ring. And I just, I didn't want to do that. And I didn't know how to navigate that situation in these real life moments on my own. And I remember in the, while in the inner circle for the longest time, there was a man you really liked. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, that was the man that inspired me to find you, Sammy. Um, I was very, very much in love with him. And um, oh, you felt like love. Yes. Yes. And I realized, you know, if I wish... I wish he would have loved me the way I loved him because then things would have been great. But it took until getting away from the issue and looking at it more from a macro, macro, macro perspective to see, you know what, he just didn't feel that way about me, you know? And, and I thought that he did, but if he did, then um, he would have been different, you know? And I wouldn't have had all this anxiety of... Uh, 
I mean, it was horrible, Sammy. It was horrible, the anxiety that I would feel. And, you know, the, the hot and the cold and the ups and the downs. And I didn't want to feel like that. I just wanted to feel secure. And I felt if he would just ask me, if he would just give me the ring, then I would feel secure. But, you know, I realized, you know, you really shouldn't ever have to feel like that. It should always be secure. And he just gives you the ring naturally. But I I thought, you know, if he would just give me the ring, then I will be secure. And then I'll feel safe in this relationship. But, you know, that that's not how it's supposed to be. You know, was it hard for you? Because I remember we were giving you feedback and I was saying, you know, okay, lean back, you know, this, there is nothing like unrequited love in the wonder world. You know, divas don't fall in love with men who don't love them back. But it took some time to hear those messages, right? Yes, because uh, it, was, it was so strong that I was feeling. It was a very strong chemical chemistry. We had a lot of um, connections from our upbringing past and where we grow up and things that kind of make you think that if there was the, uh, the one love story, oh, it would be someone with these connections and it would be someone who makes me feel like this. And, you know, these storybook uh, things we concoct, you know, that to know who the one is. And all the signs were there of this would be the one, but um, except him actually being the one. <laughs> <laughs> so what it sounds like is this was this uh, mental attraction that was fantasy building, relationship building in your head, where you were projecting that he's the one without him giving the actions in return that would confirm that he's the one, right? So it was very intense in your head versus it being intense in real life and for him. Yes, and uh, you would never be able to convince me of that at the time. Yeah. It really took time. Well, I managed. <laughs> yes. It took time for me, um, and also what was huge was continuing to rotational date. If I didn't have that exposure and if I would have stayed in that zone, I would have 100% become ex exclusive. We were exclusive for a time, actually. Stayed exclusive and been miserable for who knows how long. You know, I mean, that's how strong it was. And I, I just feel for, I know, I know for a fact there has to be so many women in that same like, scenario. Where they're just like, if he would just see that I'm worth it, or if he would just commit to me, and it's like that guy sucks. Like, <laughs> he if he is not running after you and you know chasing you and trying to make you see and you fall for him, he sucks. You know, <laughs> he's boring. He's boring. you know, just you know, turn off. <laughs> divas love to feel desired. Divas love to have a man's energy flowing towards them. And when it's not flowing, the man is not interesting, right? But, but I, I, I know how powerful these connections can feel. And to be honest, I think in relationships and in the world of relationship coaching, there is no cookie cutter answer. Right. The, the truth is, if there was potential in this relationship, things would turn around with my tools, right? So when women come to me and they ask me, so does that mean that I'm in love with this man and I can do nothing about it? That's not true. If you try the wonder tools, a lot of the times relationships miraculously turn around and the man actually starts to notice you and he actually yeah. wants to come towards you. And that also happens for so many of my clients. But I think the bottom line message here is you can't know. This is not a cookie cutter world. Every relationship is so different. Every dynamic is so different. And I think that is where having direct access to an expert makes all the difference, right? Because if you try to figure it out on your own, you wouldn't know, you know, you can stay stuck in that zone where you're not supposed to be for years, or you can keep trying hard to make him come towards you, but you're doing it all the wrong way. You know, you're doing it all in masculine energy. You're doing it all in non-valuable ways that will never work. 
Well, yeah. And I think one of the key things too, working with the coach is realizing what you're working with. I mean, I realized at a certain point it wasn't um, me not applying the tools correctly. It was that he, it was not a healthy masculine man, which is what, you know, the tools will work beautifully when you have that. But he had a lot of traumas and a lot of damage that made him unable to step up in the way that maybe he would if he had um, been in a different place in his life or had done things differently with his own self-work. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of variables. And until you have access to you, Sammy, you, you have someone who you can ask, what about this? What about that? Instead of floating out there by yourself on your own, like, what the heck is going on (laughs) being able to ask you in those moments was so huge and as time went on I kind of got the training wheels off and I could ride the bike on my own you know (laughs) at first my Sammy training wheels because I was like oh my god I'm gonna freaking fall off this bike if I don't have Sammy right behind me you know (laughs) absolutely and I think the 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 whole idea behind this work is to empower you right? So it's not about you, me being your crutches, but it's about me empowering you to walk and navigate yourself. But of course, there is a journey to that. And there is a, you know, for some women, we have so many women from the lost inner circle, also in the current inner circle, and they're all progressing. And so many women from the lost inner circle are now getting married. I mean, you got it, you got it all while you were there. But so many women are now getting married now, you know, sending me like Lizette just got married, got married, you know, she also had a hard story within the inner circle. She was going through a hard time, heartbreak. And uh, recently Freya just got engaged, you know, like, so Rola got married. So, so many people are now getting married and now getting engaged because this work is what we do. Yes, it's, it's so much about understanding men and so much about understanding attraction, but more than anything, it's about understanding your value and learning how to exhibit that value in relationships, not being, not by being an arrogant, uptight, entitled princess, but by being a soft, loving, compassionate woman in the world, very, very feminine and loving, but at the same time having boundaries and having at the same time standards, right? So don't want to stretch this too long. A little bit on your story with your wonderful, loving, loving, wonderful man now. I am so privileged. I got to be invited to Lorraine's wedding. I couldn't unfortunately make it. If I could make it to all my clients who get married in LA, I would just shift base to LA. (laughs) And um, I saw their wedding video, which was so heart watching and the beautiful speech he gave. Lauren, what's the story there? I I met my fiance when I was, well, oh my gosh, well, husband, (laughs) when um, we were, uh, I was rotational dating and I was living in San Diego. He was in LA, which is about two hours away. Um, And we met online through a dating app. And I was still very much stuck on this other guy, but I was putting myself out there dating, you know, yeah. and um, he, he would come and get a hotel and visit me in San Diego and come all this way just to take me out, you know, and time and time went on and I really liked him. We had a lot of fun together and um, he told me the first night we met, I'm going to marry you. And I was like, ah. <laughs> you're silly you're You're crazy um but as time went on we really did start to get close and to really fall for each other um but then I got to that same roadblock where he was having issues in his life where he thought you know I just need to get my business off off the ground and then I'll propose I just need to do this and then I'll propose and then that's when I was working with you Sammy and I just had to walk away I was like okay well Do whatever you need to do and come back when you're ready because I can't live like this with the if this, then, then. I can't live like that, you know? It's also how clients talk. When I get my business, I will invest in inner circle or leap into love. When I get my this, then I will. Let me get my job, then I will do. 
And it's exactly the same fears of commitment that men reflect back on us. And yes. I remember, I remember you having so much difficulty around digesting that I had asked you to let him go. Remember that? Yeah. It was hard, right? You loved him. You really, really wanted this man. Yeah, it was. It was horrible. We were, I think it was one month apart um, until we came back, maybe two, maybe one and a half. I don't know. But it was so horrible. It was so painful. I mean, there I cried a lot, but I, I had faith in the process and I, I accepted it as if it was a breakup. I didn't know if he would come back, you know, and I didn't want to wait for him uh, either in practice or emotionally inside, you know, so I, I was trying to move on as if it was really over, you know, it wasn't a strategy or a game, you know, I, I walked away. Yeah. And you walked away and I, I just want to share this with everyone who's watching because I think it's so powerful when women are not delivering empty words and ultimatums and threats to men but women are living in action, their value. Yes. So for me, when you walk away and you cry, which means you really still love me, you really want me, but you don't want me more than you love and honor and respect yourself. Yes. Yes. <laughs> totally. And that was, that was the first time that... It, I learned that with the first Skype is that my hopes and dreams are more important than being with you. <laughs> and the second time with my husband, when I walked away, it was like, you know, my hopes and dreams are more important than being put off or being until this, but no, 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 I deserve now. You know, <laughs> this yeah. is, this is crazy. And so I put myself first and it was now that's my natural state of being, but it wasn't always that way. And it's very difficult to do. And I think, I think most of the times women, when they feel uncomfortable doing something, they doubt it and they don't do it. Yeah. And which is where trust in the coach and trust in the process is so important because our egos can be so loud. Like, it's really hard in that moment to do something so hard and so difficult and so uncomfortable. And all you want your e all your ego wants is to choose the easier path and to just be with that man and just not like stand up for yourself. Yeah. You know, like I said on my honeymoon, when we were going to jump into that beautiful lagoon lake cliff and there was people getting cheered for it and cheered on and some of them just couldn't do it, um, you know, and it was scary and it was like so insane. But everyone who did it in the end was so happy, you know, and once you jump, you, you give up all control, you know, there's nothing, no one can save you once you start falling, but you get into the water, into the paradise and you're in this amazing place and you're so glad you did it. And that's what it's like being on the other side of, uh, my leap, you know, when I left in with you, I mean, I'm, I'm in the water in the oasis now. And I mean, it's better than I hoped, Sammy. It really is. <laughs> How would life be different had you not taken that jump? I, I would still be in the same place and not just in the same place with relationships, but emotionally and how I treated myself. I would have still had my same fears about scarcity with money. Um, you know, Sammy, I, I just, I can't, I can't tell you how different my life would be. I mean, I was not expecting such a, a life makeover change you know it's so much more than what I got um I'm, what I thought I was going to get so um there's no question it's hard to imagine right what a loss it would be how expensive not taking the leap is how expensive not changing your life how expensive it is to not even tr give yourself a chance to go for your dreams yeah yeah and, you know, you're, I, I was so worth it. Like, I, I'd look back <laughs> and I think about how easy it is that money comes to me now. And, um, and I think about that amount of money. I'm like, Psh, of course. 
why didn't I just do that in a second, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. But at the time with my struggles around money and my relationship with money, it was so difficult, you know? Um, But it's crazy how once you flip that switch from thinking to doing, it's almost like you, you, click into another current, you know, where everything just starts going on that current and things start coming to you, you know, from all these areas and you're not even doing anything, you know, you're not sitting down and making lists like I want this, I want that. Some people do, but it just kind of comes to you. You naturally attract things, you know, once you make that step and, and you are, you know, doing what you want, you know, it's crazy. It is so crazy. I'm like, do people know about this? Do people know? This? <laughs> well, this is all the art of manifestation, and it is not just manifestation. It's also relationship skills. It's also living in abundance energy. Yeah. And it really pains my heart when women say, "I can't afford," because I truly believe what we can't afford is to stay in those painful places. We are here to experience love and we're here to experience joy and abundance. And our relationships are such a huge part, play such a huge part in our happiness in every day, you know, in the joy and abundance we experience every day and to put them as such a low priority. So a lot of us would, you know, give out money for houses. A lot of us would give out money for cars. A lot of us would give out money for dinners and for dresses and shoes and bags. But somehow when it comes to our happiness, our sense of worthiness from deep inside, the thoughts we think about ourselves, how we feel when we go to bed, do we feel satisfied and elated about life or do we feel like we're just on a hamster wheel of confusion and insecurity and nothing seems to be working out? Yeah, but somehow we still don't choose ourselves. And I think investing in ourselves is such a strong way of choosing ourselves, choosing our joy, choosing our happiness and putting it as the number one priority in our lives and yes yes you know i tell women just stop saying i can't afford it say i don't want to invest in myself i don't want to invest in my relationship i don't want to invest in my happiness and then just see how that feels Mm. just see how that feels because that is that is the reality i don't want to or you can say it's not a priority right now this isn't important enough. And that's fine. That's fine. Right? right. But the minute you stop saying, I can't afford it, you start really saying what truly is. Because I don't want to give money for my happiness, for my success, for my joy in my relationship. That is when the reality of, of the vibration that we are really in clicks in. And it's a very low vibration. Well, <clears throat> that is so true, Sammy. And, you know, if you... <sighs> I think a lot of it comes from doubt. People say, okay, there's this amount of money and there's no guarantee, which is true. But there kind of is a guarantee because if if you follow it, you're going to you're going to get all that stuff, you know? And so if you think of it in terms of X amount of money for and I found I found like such I don't know, I if I were to see this, I don't know if I could even believe it, but it's so true. If someone were to say X amount of money for, for you to find your soulmate, for you to have the life you want, for you to repair a relationship with yourself and other people, like it's, it's a no-brainer. But I think you have to understand that that is actually possible and that is actually going to happen. You have to connect the value with that and you have to connect that it's real. I think if I didn't have the money lying around, it wasn't like it was like I could just get the money. I mean, I had to really find the money to invest at that point in time. Um, you know, but I saw the value and I saw I believed in you and I believed in myself too because I had had some success from the smaller programs. I'm like, you know what? I can do this and I'm paying all this money. I'm definitely going to do this <laughs> because, you know, you invest and you, you it, it puts your skin in the game, you know? Absolutely. So thank you, Lauren, so much for sharing this. And for yeah. everyone else who is excited about knowing more about the inner circle, just contact me, send me a message, support at sammywinter.com.
All right, my darling, then we will say bye for now. And thanks again. And everyone, please leave a comment. What was your biggest takeaway from Lauren's story? And let her know how amazing and inspiring she is. Because I can't. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Sammy. All right. <laughs> bye. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us.